All right, guys, welcome to Wanted the Nation's Rage. Welcome to another painting vlog. So right here, I'm mixing some various colors together. I've got burnt umber, Van Dyke brown, Prussian blue, and a different kind of white. It's actually, it's a mixing white, which is different from what I've been using so far I was using titanium white to highlight certain things but I just purchased this mixing white and it's quite a bit different from titanium white but I'll go over that later so as you guys saw if you did see the previous video which I gave you an update on the imperfect cathedral I finished the stained glass and when I finished the stained glass I decided that I wasn't happy with the bottom part of the painting and I had already mentioned previously about going back over this and darkening the cracks with uh, some Prussian blue now when I initially did this I used the wet on wet technique and I used a little bit of Prussian blue but that was mostly Van Dyke Brown and when I first painted all these shapes using wet on wet the paint was actually a lot darker initially but as it dried the Van Dyke Brown kind of went flat and it also lightened up quite a bit so I realized that the the darkest parts of these shapes down here at the bottom of the canvas are too flat and they actually need more depth so I figured that I needed to go back over it with some some more Prussian blue mixed into the Van Dyke Brown now this color I'm adding here that's exactly what that is that's probably two-thirds Prussian blue and one-third Van Dyke brown and I'm just hoping that as this dries it will stay that deep dark color that you're seeing right there now I knew that whenever I attempted to do this it was gonna be a gigantic task and it would take many 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 hours to complete the entire thing so before I totally committed myself to it I decided to start in the smallest section on the the far left of the painting and do a step-by-step -step procedure of adding color now I'm gonna go over this a lot throughout the painting but just know that right here this is kind of my sample where I'm just experimenting. I'm using the four colors that I just mixed to do this. And like I said, I'm just kind of experimenting. I'm looking for a result that I'm satisfied with. And as soon as I found the result that I was happy with, I decided to go ahead and undergo the rest of it. <clears throat> Now keep in mind that by the time we reach the end of this video, I will have completed uh, this painting, the whole thing. It's now done, and you're going to see the end result at the end of this video. And I do apologize for this video's length. I don't usually make my painting vlogs this long. But I'll just be honest with you, I'm doing it solely. I, I made this video so long solely out of my own convenience because I'm pretty constrained with time as far as, you know, making videos. The, the painting itself is extremely demanding of my time. And <clears throat> by the time I'm done with the painting, I really don't have a whole lot of time left. My time is very scarce at that point. Um, by the time I'm done painting and I have a video to edit, 
And so I just decided that I would be better off and it would be much more convenient for me to go ahead and just edit all of this into one video instead of making multiple videos on it. So that's why the video is so long, but hopefully you'll stick around and I, I think in this video I'll give you some pretty good examples of the technique that I'm using. It's not something that I came up with. It's a very common technique when it comes to painting, especially things like architecture and, you know, basic shapes and various things like that. So I'll just go ahead and I'll try to explain the process of what I'm doing. Basically, I have four different shades of brown here now the the deepest darkest color that i'm adding right now like i said it's like two-thirds prussian blue but i'm still going to consider it brown because it has van dyke brown mixed into it so that's the darkest color that i have and that's the one that i start out with here then i have an undertone color which is basically just Van Dyke Brown <clears throat> and Burnt Umber and it has a little bit of Prussian Blue in it and it's just enough to make it an undertone and give it an undertone kind of value. Now beyond that I have my midtone and my mid-tone is just Van Dyke Brown and Burnt Umber with a little bit of that mixing white in it. And you're going to see later on where I ran into some problems uh, with this and I'll explain it later. But then beyond that I have the fourth color and that's Van Dyke Brown and Burnt Umber with quite a substantial amount of the mixing white in it. And so the problem that you tend to run into when you start to mix a lot of white in with your color, whatever color you're using uh, for your, you know, your four values you're going to start to run into desaturation as you mix your white into it. And you need the white to make the highlight color because it's, it's very important. It's the color that's going to stand out. It's the color that's basically going to lift the shape up off of the flat canvas and it's going to give it like a three dimensional effect. So you do need the white, but you have to be careful with desaturation. But like I said, later on in the painting, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. It was an issue that I kept running into. But right here, <clears throat> you'll notice that I, I got my result on the left side and I decided to move on. So right here, what I'm doing is I'm just basically taking that darkest color and I'm adding it to all the cracks. And I decided that I was gonna do this first before I added any other colors. I was gonna basically cover the whole canvas with this darker color and all the, the cracks, you know, where light wouldn't touch at all. So I went ahead and I did that. And like I said, this was very, very, very time consuming. In fact, you know, in this video by itself, I have about 10 hours of footage all packed into it. It's uh, super time lapsed. So, but yeah, all together, you know, this whole process, it covered the span of about two days and I actually painted for longer than 10 hours um, 
but I only filmed like 10 hours of it all together. So there, there's going to be some uh, skipping here and there in the progression of what you're watching. Now this process that I'm doing, I'll, I'll go into it a little bit more here and I'll explain that all of these shapes that you see on the bottom here, I initially did using the wet on wet technique. And I didn't draw any of this, I just used two or three paint brushes switching back and forth using wet on wet and I'll give you an example of what I mean by wet on wet in a later video but basically all these shapes that you see were made with a few paint brushes using slightly different colors mainly the Van Dyke Brown and the Burnt Umber but when you do that, it's important to realize that you're just blocking in, basically, at that point. So you're left with this uh, washed out, flat kind of look to whatever you're uh, painting. Whatever you come up with using wet on wet, you're going to end up, initially, when you're just starting like from the get-go you're going to end up with these flat washed out colors and they're not going to have a whole lot of form to them i mean they'll have the form that you made using the wet on wet technique but they're not really they're not really standing out if you notice they they just look flat and two-dimensional so by doing what i'm doing here i'm basically working on lifting some of these shapes off of the canvas giving them a, a three-dimensional effect by using tone and the way that i look at tone is that it's kind of like a camera um, if you know anything about cameras you'll know that cameras have something called dynamic range um, actually some of the best cameras out there they have high dynamic range and a lot of times when you're looking at the description of these cameras it'll say that it has like 15 stops of dynamic range and basically what that is is that's that's 15 degrees of variation between your darkest dark and your lightest light And so that's kind of the way you have to look at it with with things like painting or even, you know, sketching or drawing. You've got so many different degrees that you're adding between your darkest dark and your, your lightest light. Well, in this case, it would be four for this particular uh, process that I'm doing here. Because like I said, I have the darkest color which I'm adding right here and that is Prussian blue with Van Dyke brown and burnt umber so that's the darkest you're gonna see so that would be like the first stop if it was a camera that would be like the first stop of dynamic range in itself Now when I'm doing this, because I'm left-handed, here's another thing, uh, a tip that I would give to all the lefties out there. If you're going to paint, it's probably going to be better in most cases for you to move from the right side of the canvas to the left side of the canvas so that you don't accidentally smear some of the paint, which I actually did quite a bit in the process of painting this.
So right here you see me adding that what would be like the third stop. It's the second to the darkest. This is Van Dyke Brown Burnt Umber and just a little bit of Prussian Blue. And there I go adding the mid-tone. And finally the highlight right there. Now you're gonna see as I as I do this that these shapes are starting to take some form. They're starting to actually lift off of the canvas and they're starting to get somewhat of a three-dimensional effect. But it was about right here where I, I realized that I was having some problems with my mid-tone and this is why I was saying you got to be careful with your mid-tone in itself because well whatever you're using as a mid-tone the, the mid-tone is very very important because it's it's actually connecting <clears throat> it's actually connecting the the darkest color with the lightest color it's in the middle and so it needs to have quite a bit of saturation because your darkest color is not going to have much saturation to it it's going to be primarily dark just keep that in mind and then as you go to your highlight your highlight obviously is going to have in most cases quite a bit of white in it and white is known to desaturate any color especially pigment and oil paint so your mid-tone needs to have the saturation in it otherwise it's it's gonna actually be a little bit difficult to see and if you can't see the mid-tone underneath the highlight then it's gonna end up looking kind of like like it does right here where you can see the darkest color and you can see the lightest color but there's nothing in between connecting the two and I'll give you an example of what it should look like a little bit later on as I progress see right here you know if if I could do it over again I would have added some more burnt umber to my mid-tone color because right here what I'm actually painting is very desaturated it doesn't have a whole lot of color to it and it still looks three-dimensional it still gives it the effect that I was trying to give it it still stands out and I, I'm happy with the way it looks but you know if I could do it again and go by what I learned during this whole process then that's what I would do I would definitely add more saturation more color to everything overall by means of using the mid-tone When I initially made these shapes with the wet on wet technique, I was just, you know, using my imagination, thinking about the inside of a cathedral, like what, what would be on the walls. I, I did a little bit of uh, research. I looked up some cathedrals online just to see what they look like. And Most cathedrals are full of, you know, 
fine details, a lot of uh, ornamental things, a lot of just handcrafted artisan type materials, even the building materials themselves, everything is so fancy and decked out and highly detailed that I just, I love cathedrals. Um, there, there's so much love and so much thought into how they're designed or how they were designed because most of them are hundreds of years old. But I was just thinking, you know, whenever I created this, I was thinking, you know, hand carved wood panels in front of masonry blocks. And I came up with some, some pretty interesting shapes. I think I, I used the, the Gothic arch itself as a a main concept and everything that I uh, actually brushed out with the paint initially. And each one of these sections is actually, you know, it's, it's not random. It's actually a pattern. If you look at it closely, you can see that each one of the shapes are on uh, each side. Another thing you want to watch out for when you're doing this uh, process that I'm doing here, which I mean, keep in mind that there are many ways to paint. This is only one process. There are many ways of doing what I'm doing here. I'm not saying this is the, the easiest or the most convenient way to do it. In fact, I'm sure it's not because like I said, this took several hours to do. It was very meticulous and you know, you just, you're basically covering over every single shape, every fine detail. You're going over it multiple times with different paints. But another thing you want to watch out for is adding too much highlight, which I'm definitely guilty of from time to time. And that's almost what this side looks like. It, it almost looks like it has too much highlight. But the reason why it looks like that, like I said, is because of the issue I was having with the mid-tone and another thing you got to watch out for when you're doing this is your paint itself now like I said you're gonna be if you do it like this you're gonna be working for hours on end and you just you want to make sure that your paint is free-flowing you want it to stay soft and I mean it, it is oil paint so it dries very slow but after oil paint sits out in the open air for you know 12 hours or more it can actually lose some of its uh, fluidity I guess is what you'd call it and at that point yeah it's still usable at that point but it's not as uh, it's not as easy to work with as when it first comes out of the tube and 
using this method also takes a lot of paint. I, I went through quite a bit of paint doing this and for the the most effective results you're going to want to use plenty of paint. I found that whenever I was trying to stretch the paint out I actually ended up working a lot harder <laughs> than I would have had to if I just you know kept producing paint you know kept, kept using the paint out of the tubes but on the other hand that undertone that dark color uh, the darkest color that I'm laying down if you can put that down in a thin layer you're actually going to be better off because if you put it down thin and put the mid-tone down thick the the mid-tone is going to show up a lot better if you put a whole crap load of uh, undertone the darkest the the darkest color if you put a whole bunch of it down and then you try to put the mid-tone on top of it depending on how much the range differs or how much lighter the mid-tone is from the undertone you're gonna have problems with it showing up and that's exactly what happened with me and as I come to the end of working on this particular panel or the the right bottom corner of the canvas you can you can see that it's it's desaturated it's highly detailed and it it definitely has some form going on it, it looks three dimensional at this point but it's also you know desaturated which I think takes away from the beauty of it really but at this point you know I, I was I realized where I had gone wrong but I I just decided to keep moving forward at this point now by the time I got over to the middle of the canvas and started working on those shapes basically doing the same thing I realized what the problem was and I I added some more color to my midtone which you can see it right here another way to describe the method that I'm using here is it's kind of like you're just you're immersing all of your shapes your blocked in shapes you're immersing them in shadow and then from that point it's up to you how much of that particular blocked in shape you want to reveal you can hide as much of of you can hide as much of it as you want in the shadows and not reveal it or you can reveal as much of it as you want a lot of times it's going to come down to your light source however and depending on how detailed your painting is and how many shapes you're actually applying this to uh, my advice would be do little sections at a time like I'm doing instead of like trying to go over all of your your uh, blocked in shapes with the undertone before you hit any of it with the midtone or the highlight 
if you do that, you run a risk of uh, getting lost. <laughs> because remember, you know, that the color that I added first to all the cracks is a dark color. And the undertone, it's a little bit different. I mean, it's not quite as dark as the color I use for the cracks, but it's also, I mean, it's possible to tell the difference between the two, but it's kind of hard and you can actually get, get lost and lose, <laughs> lose where your undertone is. When you get ready to put the mid tone over top of it, you can lose where it's at and you don't want that to happen. So that's why I'm doing this in small sections so I can keep up with it and not lose track of where I'm at. these things <laughs> on top of this door right here I don't really know what to call them it was just kind of something that came out of my mind I don't know that's the only way I can describe it they kind of look like facaded dorms if that's even a word facaded <laughs> or faux dorms if you know what I'm talking about like the like on certain houses, you'll see these uh, windows that stick out of the roof. They're called dorm windows. Um, that's kind of what it looks like to me. I don't know. They also kind of look like really fancy speakers. But, you know, this is a cathedral. And it's really old. Or it's supposed to be really old. So... <laughs> I don't think that it would have speakers in it, but that's another thing that they kind of look like to me. But anyway, these things were extremely satisfying to uh, to paint over right here. Uh, I was really happy. Once I got the mid-tone problem straightened out, I, I was really pleased to do this part right here it was really satisfying to me now you see the difference right there between the left and the right. You can see that mid-tone color coming through very well, as opposed to the far right side where it's pretty much absent. And that's, that's the example I was talking about giving you right there, that's it makes all the difference and it, it actually, you know, that mid-tone, it really brings it to life, in my opinion. It gives it a lot of presence. No, I definitely learned a lot in the making of this painting. Things that I, I hope to carry with me and, you know, keep in mind 
for every new painting that I do. And that's another reason why I'm making these painting vlogs is because I'm basically recording my thoughts and any kind of technique that I might happen to pick up along the way. And I'll, you know, obviously describe it in the video so that if I need to come back to it later on, if there's something that I need to remember how to do or anything else, I can always just come back to it. And I hope that this, if it doesn't help people, I hope it at least inspires people to want to paint because I started painting again about a month and a half ago when I started this painting, I that's when I started painting again. I haven't attempted to paint in years, but I was just inspired. I was inspired by other people on YouTube that are sharing their art. And it really just made me want to jump back on board and, and start painting again and kind of look at it in a different way than I had previously. But painting is very, very satisfying. Like I said, it demands so much time to do it. And it takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of focus and endurance. You have to be willing to put the time in to get the results that you're looking for. And you have to practice and you have to be consistent with it. You just, you, you have to do it over and over and over again. Now, I have painted a lot in my lifetime, but this is the first time, I have to say, this is the first time that I've actually started to do it on a consistent basis. And because of that, because of the, the dedication factor, I think that I am improving overall. Now this painting itself, it's full of mistakes. It's full of um, things that, you know, if I did it over again, I know I could do it better than I did in the first attempt. But that's not really the point. The point is to do it and finish it and, you know, reap the, the benefit of it, the reward. The reward is you probably learn some valuable information and you also have a painting of your choice, whatever you decided to do. <clears throat> and I realized that I have a, uh, a particular style I'm very um, interested in architecture and gothic style buildings, um, anything like Renaissance, Victorian stuff, you know, there's just something in my soul that connects with that and when I do art, that seems to be the thing that that naturally comes out of me.
Now, I mentioned that this painting was full of uh, mistakes here and there, but I don't have any regrets for taking the time to do it. Now, actually, I, do, I take that back. I do have one regret. My one regret is that I didn't film from the beginning. But if you watch until the end of this video, I do have pictures that I took as the painting itself progressed. I don't have pictures from the very beginning of it, but I do have pictures from the end of day one, the first day that I started working on it. Now at this point, I was starting to get really antsy <laughs> and really eager to finish this part of the painting. This, this whole endeavor here, it, it took probably about 16 hours to go back over all this. Now, and, and keep in mind that I also went over the roof section but now we move on to the doors and the doors I have saved for last. This is the last part of the painting. I had previously gone over them just to block them in and I put in these clover shapes, but I didn't really pay it too much attention to the angle. Uh, so the, the clover shapes are actually off a little bit. And what I initially wanted to do here is the same thing that I did on the wood panels up above the door. But as I progressed, I realized that I wasn't happy with things like, like this here. I wanted there to be more to the doors. So I tried something a little bit different and I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about what I tried. But it's actually a different technique that I haven't ever tried before. And I'll explain it. So this is a lizard and crimson here that I'm going over with the mahogany color. And I like the way it looks. Uh, it looks pretty good to me. Uh, one thing I wanted the doors to look like is I wanted them to look weathered and old and you know, like they've been there for hundreds of years. And this here, this is that uh, burnt umber mixed with quite a bit of the, the mixing white color. And I purposely gave them that old, like worn out looking weathered texture. But then I had a, another idea, you guys, and this is what I was talking about right here. I had quite a bit of Prussian blue left over on my canvas that I didn't want to just throw away. So I thought I would try something here. I just got a little small amount of it on my brush and went over the crimson with like a one stroke swipe. And instead of blending it together, the, the Prussian blue is so transparent that I would 
I would almost equate this to like glazing. It's almost like glazing because you can see the red underneath the, uh, I mean, you can see the crimson underneath the Prussian blue. It's not really blended together. So I like the way that looks so much that I decided to go over the burnt umber the same way. And it kind of just, it, it, to me, it makes it look old. And so, yeah, that's what I ended up doing with the doors. The last thing that I had to do is touch some things up after going back over the, the wood panels, making them much, much darker. I realized that this frame here for the door has way too much contrast in it. And I wanted to get rid of a lot of that, a lot of that white that stood out on the, the frames of the windows and the doors. And yeah, here I am signing the finished painting. It's finally done, you guys. We can finally move on to the next thing. Okay guys, this is a done deal. This is a finished painting. I don't have very many of these. I have lots of paintings, but few of them are actually finished. Well, <clears throat> I have to say this painting has been quite enjoyable to work on. As I said before, it all came from an idea when I was drawing with my son about a month and a half ago, and this is where it ended up in the end. It was a pleasure to work on, and it was even more of a pleasure to finish. <laughs> so I do have another painting coming right up that I actually need to uh, get done within the next month and I will be starting that one I will be recording and making painting vlogs on that next painting from start to end uh, unlike I did with this one I started filming the painting vlogs about well, maybe a little under halfway through it. Uh, you guys remember when I started painting the stained glass in the middle? So, unfortunately, I don't have uh, any video of the very beginning of the painting, but I do have a few pictures that I took. Um, as I gradually got into it so if you'd like uh, at the end of this video I'll have a little slideshow showing you pictures of the way that this painting progressed and other than that I want to thank you for watching the painting vlogs and like I said I'll see you in the next one and we will be starting a new series on a new painting in the next one alright thanks for watching see you around Jared signing out with one of the nation's rage, so on and so forth. Later, guys.